Hi, I'm meteorologist Jonathan Urban with meteorologist Tim Ballesty from weather.com. If April was a record tornado month, in the month of May we're worrying about floods and droughts. So we're going to give you a little preview, a behind the scenes look at what meteorologists look at to show the excessive rain and some areas that definitely need rain over the next seven days. So let's start off by, by taking a look at a chart that meteorologists look at. This is this is kind of a noisy looking chart, but this is actually looking at anomalies in the upper level flow pattern. And what you see in the cool colors here is where the troughs are stronger than average, and what you see in the dark in the uh, warmer colors here are where the upper level ridges are stronger. And what I want to show you here is over the southeast and the eastern U.S. Uh, as we go into the upcoming week, we're going to see this sharp trough that's going to be trapped by a strong upper level ridge over eastern Canada. And the result is we're going to see a blocked up pattern. It's like it's like a drain that needs to be unplugged. You know, pour that drain or down that drain. That's that's what we're going to have to deal with. So as a result, we're just going to see a very unsettled pattern with a with a very stormy week and days and days of rain. Tim, take us through that surface pattern. What does that mean for us? So this is what it's going to look like at the surface. Talk about that block pattern where. At the surface, we're going to have these successive areas of low pressure, but really this stubborn area of low, of low pressure that's sort of just going to be hanging off the east coast with this warm front that kind of just drapes itself across uh, parts of the northeast and, and New England. And meanwhile, we have this very strong and robust uh, easterly fetch off the Atlantic. A lot of moisture. How much? Let's take a look. Let's take a look at that. Check that out. So we're talking, this is the precipital water. Precipital water is basically how much available moisture is in the atmosphere, how much we can squeeze out of the atmosphere to make it fall uh, as rain. And you can see these yellows and greens indicate areas of one to two, maybe even three inches of rain um, that's available, that's coming out of the, the eastern, the western Atlantic, but also even parts of the Caribbean that's all surging northward into the northeast and meeting up with some of these boundaries that are in place that help to squeeze out that moisture and have days and days of heavy rain. You know, Tim, this is a pattern sometimes we'll see in the tropics in August. Sometimes we'll get a stalled out front uh, somewhere over the east, maybe in the interior northeast, and then you'll see an old tropical system that'll come up, some remnant tropical cyclone that'll come up the east coast and bring all that tropical moisture, ram it into that stalled front. And we've had some, you know, some historic flooding uh, in the past. Uh, we're not expecting that per se, but it, it's a somewhat similar pattern to what you'll see in the tropics sometimes in, in the heart of the summer. So let's let's show you what this days of rain looks like, Tim. Yeah. So at the surface, now this is our computer model guidance. This is one of the computer models that we use to take a look in the, the days ahead. And as we push this ahead, we'll just see these areas of green, which indicates areas of precipitation in yellow, actually, that kind of just sit and sit across the East Coast, but especially parts of the Mid-Atlantic and New England. And look at that. Just, this is, now we're moving ahead, hours and hours, days and days ahead. And it's just sitting there. And so that's why we're seeing, um, we're really getting started to get concerned about the potential for flooding. We've been talking about so much flooding elsewhere in the in parts of the Mississippi Valley, but now, well, look at this. This is the potential. It's a forecast that the Weather Channel has produced. We're looking at two inches plus, perhaps, in this green area, parts of the Midwest combined with the parts of the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast and New England, but also this yellow area is where we really want to focus on. That's where the potential for four inches or more of rain. That doesn't spell well. Now, now, we're not saying that it's going to be raining the entire no. time, and it's going to be periods of rain, but again, when, it, when a system stalls out for days and days and days, this time of year when the atmosphere is, is getting more moisture in it, uh, there, is a, there is a strong potential for at least some localized flooding. And there's one place in particular we've been watching fairly closely, Tim. That's it. It's Lake Champlain. It's been it's reached record levels earlier this month, maybe even as, uh, as early as late April. But as you can see, the stage, this is 101, 102, 103 feet. It's reached its record stage already. And it's now even, it's still even major stage. If not, actually, it's still above its old record stage. And it still um, it lingers and lingers. It takes a long time for a lake like this, as massive as it is, to start coming down. And it's only gradually start to come uh, out of its record stage. And by the way, with all this rain coming, we're probably not going to see this change all that much. In fact, we might see this blue line start to do this and go up. Absolutely, and it's not just a, you know, it's not just a precipitation story. Um, folks have been dealing with some record heat parts of the south. Well, as we come to the upcoming week, because of that trough that's dug in over the east, uh, we're bringing a much cooler weather. So, if you're looking at 80s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, uh, you're probably going to be looking at 50s and 60s, maybe some 70s, uh, at least for a good chunk of the beginning of next week. Here, there are departures from average, so the cool colors show below average temperatures. 
so much of the Ohio Valley, and the Tennessee Valley, and eventually in parts of the Appalachians and the interior northeast, temperatures will be well below average to start the upcoming week. So it's not just that story, it's the, uh, it's, it's the cool down. But there's something else coming. And, you know, we're, we're dealing with the great flood of 2011 in the lower Mississippi Valley. And there's another feature that we're watching later next week. We've got a strong trough that's uh, initial upper level low that's going to pile its way in the Pacific Northwest uh, over the next couple of days, probably produce some locally excessive rains in parts of the Cascades. Well, that trough is eventually going to dip down in the Rockies uh, in the upcoming week and then swing out into the Plain States. Now, typically in May when that happens, you ramp up the severe threat with that. But due to this rather blocky pattern, what's going to happen, we think, is this upper level low is just going to sit and stall and only move very slowly from the plains, yes, into the lower Mississippi Valley. So what does that, what does that mean as far as sensible weather? We're looking at about the middle of next week. Again, the green colors uh, generally show areas of precipitation, so about the middle of next week. We think the severe threat will come back in some form in the plain states. Uh, so the great tornado hunt, you can follow it at Tornado Hunt on Twitter, by the way. Uh, you can follow them in the middle of next week. I'm sure they'll be quite busy. Hopefully we'll get some rain into the drought areas of Oklahoma and Texas uh, in the middle of next week. But eventually this upper level low moves east where we could get some locally heavy rain in the lower Mississippi Valley during the Great Flood of 2011 around the time when these rivers are starting to near their crest. And, you know, it's too early to say at this point will it be an excessive rainfall. I, I'm not sure it will be a 20 inch plus rain event that we saw you know, a couple of weeks ago that really, really put, tipped the trigger on this great flood. But there could be more excessive heavy rain uh, late next week in the lower Mississippi Valley. So we've got quite a contrast here. And the, we're looking at the drought monitor here. The various shades, the darker shades show where the drought is, I guess, worse, if you want to put it that way. And look at, look at Texas. I mean, almost half of Texas, Tim, is an exceptional drought. I mean, this is amazing. But if you go just a couple of hundred miles away, there's a big difference. I mean, we're looking at we're looking at the Great Flood of 2011 coming down the Mississippi Valley, but yet you go just a couple hundred miles away, and they're dealing with a major, major drought. And so it's unusual, I guess, in a sense that this river flood event, this historic river flood event, is in kind of a perverse way. It's taken out the drought in in the uh, Lower Mississippi Valley, at least within those river valleys and bayous and, and backwater tributary areas. So, again, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, I'm meteorologist Jonathan Urban with meteorologist Tim Ballastine.